Hi, I'm Jeff Stark, and thanks again for being with me today. This is the fourth video of a series of videos that we've titled uh, Boys Becoming Men, born out of a concern uh, uh, that seems to be a fairly common complaint among women and wives today, that the men that they happen to be married to are not very mature men and perhaps even profoundly immature and the difficulty that that is really for them. And the first three videos have been uh, recognizing that as a problem in many marriages, although not all, of course, but also uh, where you happen to find yourself as a man or a woman in that kind of a marriage. How can we begin to help those men to transition out of being a boy and being a man? Uh, that's a very lengthy process and a very uh, complicated one, but nonetheless, the Holy Spirit wants to grow uh, men and women from being infants into adulthood and maturity and um, in a Christian and a mature um, a Christian way as well. And uh, the first three videos have um, were recorded in order to try to give some ideas on how to transition from being boys into being men. Video number three was what I titled my story in that uh, the story really talks about a, a very important moment, a real defining moment in my life uh, that helped me to transition from being an immature man to a more mature man. And interestingly, that was not when I was 18 or 19 or 16. It really happened when I was about 26 years old. So at 26, I was still immature in certain ways and be having boyhood sorts of qualities. And there was a lot going on in my life to help me to change that. But there was a moment in time which I described in video number three that was a turning point for me in helping me to transition to a higher level of maturity than I had had before. You know, be uh, um, eager for you to see that and see how that might be helpful to uh, uh, you men in your own marriage. But anyway, we're in video number four right now. And uh, although what happened in video number three that I was describing was really a particular morning that I had um, uh, when I was around 26, 25, something like that. This is uh, something that has also been, prof I want to talk to you today about something that was, has been very, very profoundly influential in my life in terms of becoming, uh, transitioning out of being an immature person to a more mature man, uh, transitioning from immaturity to maturity, transitioning from a boy to a man. And uh, this is equally as important in my life um, as the first one, and perhaps uh, even more so. But here's my story. I'd like to tell you the second story of my life here. When I was in seminary and back in 1974 to 1977, around 1976, a, uh, or 77, I'm not sure, it's probably 76. But anyway, there was a, a president of the Westminster Theological Seminary, a student president. And uh, one day, <laughs> before cell phones and things like that, he got in touch with about 20 men who were also in sem uh, seminary. They were seniors and juniors and sometimes uh, uh, freshmen, for first year, second year, third year. But he, he gathered about, he said he wanted to meet with about 20 of us. So I remember we all met together one night upstairs in an attic, somebody's attic, uh, and um, which was converted into a bedroom or a lounge room or something. But what he did was he gathered us together. And this is basically what he said. He said, men, I want to tell you about something that's been happening in my life and because I think it would be something that would be really beneficial to you. And he said, there's been about four or five other guys, me and this guy and that guy, and these are guys that you know from, from the seminary community and maybe outside of it. But nonetheless, for the last two or three years, we've been meeting on a weekly basis or maybe bi-weekly, and we've been gathering together as a way of trying to help us to grow and get educated and to help each other to grow out of into maturity and um, a, a group that meets uh, regularly. We talk about our successes. More importantly, we talk about our failures. We talk about our struggles. We pray for each other. Uh, when we meet, we might look at the scriptures. We counsel each other. We encourage each other. We comfort each other. And sometimes we, we uh, rebuke and correct each other as needed. But uh, we've been doing this now for three or four or five years, and it was, it's been proven to be really, really, really beneficial to every one of the men who have been coming to this group on a consistent basis for a long period of time. And you know what? We don't know where this is happening anywhere else, but I th we think 
that it would be important for you to know what we've been doing over the last three or four years, how extremely beneficial it has been for us in our own development as Christian men and potentially Christian leaders. And um, we just can't imagine our grow ourselves growing into maturity apart from this group, as good as church is and friendship is and parents are. You know, this, this group has proven to be essential to us in terms of growing into a deeper, profound faith and Christian maturity. So guys, I would really strongly suggest that you find three or four other guys who you would be willing to and able to meet with and do the same thing that we've been doing. I'm sure it would be of great benefit to you. Well, that made a lot of sense to me. And uh, at the end of that meeting, I remember getting, I remember looking through that meeting and this makes sense to me. So who would I'd like to hook up with and start meeting in that way? And I saw two guys, at least two guys, maybe three. And immediately when the meeting was over, I went to this guy and said, hey, are you, are you just in doing this with me? And he said, yeah. And we went over to that guy and we talked to that guy. Hey, are, does this make sense to you? Or are you just in doing this as well? And that guy said, yes. I don't know if we had time to find a third person or a fourth person, I guess it would have been. But anyway, out of that came, I started meeting with one, uh, three or four other guys on a weekly or bi-weekly way. And uh, we started doing the things that was described by this president, student president, whose name happened to be Skip Ryan. And when um, Skip was telling us about that, well, we began to duplicate that over time in our own particular group meeting. I'm not sure if it was weekly or every other week. I think it was probably every other week, early in the morning, like six o'clock in the morning. And uh, we started meeting and um, we would meet every other week, probably. We, uh, the group consisted of about four or five, six guys at the most. Uh, we understood that there was a high degree of commitment that was needed on the part of our group. We were very, very committed to meeting uh, at that time at six o'clock. You had to be there every other week. You had to be there on time. <laughs> and uh, if you didn't by any chance, you'd get a couple of nasty phone calls from, from us because why? We were not getting up at 5.30 in the morning and, and not having anybody else show up. Uh, so it was, there was a high degree of commitment to meet at six to meet regularly, you know, okay, if you had an emergency and you had to go to the hospital, then that was a, a reasonable exception. Otherwise, you really re were required and expected to be there. And what was in, in, in that became our friendships and in the context of getting to know one another and trusting one another and admiring one another, we began to open up in ways to one another that we would not open up in any other kind of a situation. So we became very dear to one another and we would listen to one another receive correction from one another and rebuke and um and we became very close and after a year or two of that you know these are the guys uh that you would call um if you needed some help on the weekend hey we're moving from point a to point b can i ask you guys to show up well sure well we become very close friends and we could count on one another not simply to be there for that group but also to help in other ways as well you know, and I, like Skip, I agree that the, that group played a very important role in my life in growing me up, quite frankly. Now, when we all graduated, we that group graduated, we stopped meeting, but there were some of us who were going to stay local and wanted to continue to grow and, and meet like that, and we would invite occasionally um, a man or two to the group where it might grow to be five or six or seven. And that next group that morphed into the second group, the first group that morphed into the second group, lasted for probably five, six, seven years, something like that. A long time. A lot of good men moved in and had to move out. And, but I, I am extremely confident that if I were had every man who was part of that group over those years, if they were here today to say, was that a, a profoundly important um, explanation or cause or strategy for the growth of maturity in Christian character, they would all say very, very, very much so. Anyway, um, that group, I eventually left that second group and went on to form the Chestnut Hill Men's Group, which was very similar uh, to that kind of a group. And that started back in 1984 or 85. It's now 2019, and that group has existed for about 30 years. So, uh, and a lot of men have moved in and moved out of that group, 
but um, it's proven to be very, very valuable for me, um, as well as the men who have come and gone. This is how I explain the importance of this group. I tell people, you know, if, if I've been in church for 30 years, this, for this long, and it has benefited me to this degree, being in a men's group for 5, 10, 15, 20 years has helped me to grow this much. Isn't that interesting? Going to church for 30 years has helped me to grow and mature this much, but being in the men's group in a way that I've just described has really helped me to grow this much. And I don't think that's uncommon for people who have been involved in that kind of an experience of, of growing closely, weekly, bi-weekly, um, with other men, challenging and encouraging and helping one another to, uh, to grow into Christian maturity. You know, all the men that we've met with, uh, both in the seminary community, but those who were part of the group who were not part of the seminary in the second uh, group, they've all grown into uh, positions of Christian leadership. And that wouldn't be really surprising uh, because of the value of what we sought to do and we, uh, we were able to accomplish with God's help. Proverbs chapter 13 says this. In one verse, this really capsulizes why we need to be in groups like this and the outcome of what happens to people who are in these groups over an extended period of time. Proverbs 13 verse 20 says this. He who walks with the wise grows wise, but a companion of fools suffers harm. Knowing that we were all immature and we all needed more maturity in general, we needed to be uh, more mature in our marriages, we needed to be more mature as single men, and we needed to grow in maturity uh, in terms of being fathers uh, and church members. Well, we decided to meet together uh, and try to pool our wisdom as a way of trying to hang out with wise people. Pooling our wisdom, we believed, would help us to grow in, in also in godliness and maturity and wisdom. And you know what? It happened. We happened to uh, hang out together as wise men trying to get wiser. And we all became wiser for being with each other over those many years. But it says the companion of fools suffers harm. And uh, I, I fear that for absence of hanging out with on a consistent basis, wise men, if you happen to be a Christian man, but you're, compa you're a companion of men who are not wise, but may be on the foolish side, you're going you're gonna to suffer for that. You're going to suffer as a man in general. You suffer with that as a congregant man. Uh, a man in a congregation, as well as um, that lack is going to play out in your marriage as a husband and also as a father. Think of Jesus. What did Jesus do when it was time to go about his ministry? He, one of the first things he did was he chose 12 men. And they were with him for three consistent days for three years where he was growing them and in wisdom and godliness and character and kingdom truth and all those sorts of things as well. He needed three years to train his men. Well, uh, we're much less than Jesus, but uh, we need to be with men, other men as well, in ways that I've described here today. And uh, that has turned out to be of great benefit to me, the men who met with me over those years, um, as well as anyone else uh, who happens to be in those kinds of groups. Now, video number five, which will be our next uh, video, what I'm going to do for those of you who are interested in those kinds of groups and what, how does that kind of, that group, um, how does that form like that and what are the rules, or the, the, the guidelines and the parameters that make for a good group like that? I'm going to give you some rules and parameters on how to establish that group and uh, what that group looks like for those of you who now say, you know what, I, I really need to find out how to do this as well. Well, video number five will give you some of the, uh, the strategies and the rules and the way that the groups uh, behave and how they go about it. Okay, a little bit more detail than I gave to you today. But I hope that's helpful to you. Um, video number three described one incident on a Saturday morning that was very instrumental in helping me to grow up in a way that I hadn't previously. The, these groups that I've described for you were absolutely essential to growing me and the other men and character and maturity. And you know, quite honestly, if you don't have this kind of a group, I just don't know how men can grow into, into uh, maturity and character and integrity and 
and uh, responsibility. They proved to be very, very essential, and that's why I'm passing my second story on to you, hoping that that might stir you up to uh, form a group like that and um, grow from it as well. I hope that's helpful. Hopefully you'll stay tuned to number five, which will tell you a little bit more about how to form those groups and what those groups really consist of. Thanks for being with me.